Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I'm going to be taking the 2024 Chevrolet Equinox EV on a range test. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, that's right. I'm here again to do a range test. And if I'm being honest, I actually already did a range test. I did them a normal loop and I discovered that there was a flaw in my loop uh, whereas because of like such a great rise of elevation with a very steep grade it kind of made it an unfair test for other cars that might be heavy now it doesn't mean it's not a valid test I'm still gonna post that video so that'll kind of show what the I'm calling it the mountain range is um, but this test I think is gonna give a little bit more representative of smooth highway cruising uh, range which is what most people do um, I would say uh, obviously there's a time and place for being able to go up elevation and see what that range is but I think this will be a little bit more fair uh, so we're charging up to 100% hopefully it doesn't take too long we're at 89% right now so only 11 more percent to go I'm gonna run in use the restroom and then hopefully by the time I'm back we're pretty close to being done so while we're waiting for the last two percent here at uh, I believe 50 15 kilowatts. Um, let's go over the parameters of the test. So first off, it's going to be 70 miles per hour. I'll be able to maintain the majority of the trip, except for obviously when I leave the, the charging site here and when I do my turnaround. Um, well, turnarounds, uh, there will be multiple turnarounds. The climate will be set at 72 auto with the lowest fan speed because uh, this car gets really cold. The AC really works if you like the Chevy Equinox. Um, and then as far, I'm gonna keep all the other climate things like the, the ventilated seats are gonna stay off and that's pretty much it. Yeah, no heated seats, uh, so yeah. So that'll be it. And then we're just gonna cruise at 70 miles per hour and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna try and arrive here at 0% or as close to it as I feel comfortable. And then we'll have the range for the Chevy Equinox EV. And like I said earlier, hopefully a more fair range um, because this car does weigh, it does weigh a lot for um, this, the, the look of it. It's almost 5,000 pounds, whereas the Volkswagen ID4, which is my other car, weighs 4,200 pounds. So 800 pounds makes a big difference, especially if you're going up a big old hill. So uh, let's let's wait here for the charge to be completed. It says we're at 99%, so it should be soon, and then we'll get on our way. There are 99%, 12 kilowatts. We're getting so close to being able to leave. The energy del delivered is, is barely moving over there. Oh my gosh. Oh, so blurry. There it is. Barely moving. So once that's done, I'm gonna unplug and get on the road. So I'll meet you all on I-70. We're at 100% and the charge session just ended. I am gonna also run Eco Climate. It just cuts off the air to the back. So I feel like that's fair, especially just trying to see what this thing can do. So let's go ahead and let us unplug and leave. We have made it to the highway and now the range test is on. Um, I almost hit all the lights, so it's gonna be a good night. Uh, there's three lights you have to hit to be able to get on the highway. I got two, two out of three. So now we're gonna go, we're gonna loop around. Now this loop is a little bit shorter than the loop I usually do, so that, well used to do, I guess now. Uh, that was a, a 50 mile out, 50 mile back, so 100 mile. This is gonna be about 40 miles out, 40 miles back. So I might have to do uh, maybe one more loop uh, than I normally would for the range test here. And then I'll have to do a partial loop uh, when I get closer to the end of the range test. What am I expecting? I'm I'm thinking for real this time if anyone was on the last live stream I'm not doing a live stream for this one so I can listen to some music uh, 290 290 I think I'm gonna get 290 300 would be great if I get more than that that would be awesome too uh, from what I can tell I'll double check but we have a slight crosswind so not the end of the world it's you know it's not that strong as far as temperature is concerned we're right around 80 degrees it'll probably be around 72 by the end so temperatures are looking good for the range test as well pretty pretty optimal so I'm giving the Chevy Equinox EV every opportunity to do really well and I think it will do 
do just that. So let's go ahead, get to the range test, and I'll catch up with you all at 75% state of charge. Also, if anyone was wondering why my hands weren't on the steering wheels because I have Super Cruise Activator right now, but they are right, right underneath the steering wheel, ready to cover if they need to. But based on my experience with 70, like we probably won't need to cover the steering wheel too much. Here we go. We have made it to 75% state of charge. We have gone 63.9 miles, 2.9 mile per kilowatt hour efficiency. Right now, we're actually pacing to get almost the exact same result as the last range test I did. Uh, now, I know I have um, a big descent to go in uh, to the turnaround point, so we'll probably get a little bit better because we obviously have to equal out all of the elevation we had gained. We'll see what happens. Um, but if we were to take those numbers, right now I'm still 75%, but it says 64.5. So that's 240, 16, 256, yeah, 256 to 258. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, I definitely was expecting a little better than this, uh, but again, it's a new loop. I'm trying it out and we're just gonna see what happens. Checking in here at 50% state of charge. We've been driving for about two hours. 134.2 miles, still 2.9 mile per kilowatt hour, which is almost exactly the same as my last range test. And we are basically only beating the last range test by a couple of miles. So uh, this is pretty interesting. We still have to finish this loop. Uh, that will help out a little bit. I'm definitely thinking that this is going to perform better than the other range test, but not by much, which is building up a little bit of uh, confidence, I guess, in my previous loop that it was okay that I did it the way I did it. I kind of like this loop a little bit better, so I might use this. Um, the problem is because of Maryland traffic, I'll have to run it at nighttime because uh, this road gets really bad during the day, even, even during weekends. A lot of people travel on this road, uh, so which is fine, so whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna keep driving um, and get this result you know, I'll give you the final result. It's worth noting, I'll probably talk about this in the closing as well, but I do think that this vehicle, and based on, based on my observations, if it was on a completely flat grade, um, I do think it could get closer to that 300 uh, mile range. Um, in Maryland, it's just like I've said before, my, there is, there's just nowhere you can drive 70 miles an hour aside from 70 uh, and you know it is what it is the, the change in elevation is not as bad uh, but it's still not ideal at times uh, but I do drive it you know back and forth in a loop style test so it should negate a lot of stuff but if the car doesn't have enough regen and yada 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 you know who knows but so anyways I'm gonna go ahead get paying attention back to the road and then catch up with you all at 25% state of charge. Okay, I am checking in here at 25% state of charge. We have gone 200.4 miles, 2.9 mile per kilowatt hour efficiency still. Um, when I had gone back towards Frederick last time, I bumped up to three, so maybe I'll get back to three. And then I just have to do a small little loop probably we're looking at a finish probably 266 miles, which is almost exactly the same as the last range test, which is making me feel, I don't know, I guess good about my test procedure, or I don't, I don't know. Um, at least these two were the same. I still believe that if it was flat, it would probably do a better result, 290, 300. But again, I don't really have anywhere in Maryland that I can do that. so. I am opening up to anyone, you know, uh, who does range tests uh, that are a little bit more official than me. Uh, you may borrow my car because I just want to see what it would do in your standardized range test. Um, I'm a little, bu a, li a little bummed out with this range test, but it's also, it's not terrible. Like if I'm being honest, um, 266, half of that's 130 if you just charge it 30 for, uh, to 50 percent it's plenty that's all i would ever need 
Um, with the way this car charges, you wouldn't want to charge above 50% in any, anyway. So I don't think it's that that much of a deal breaker. I just think that it's the the um, the psychology of it, where you know your advertising is 319, and then when someone drives it, they don't get that. And then on top of that, for me, I guess where I'm a little bit disappointed is the Cadillac Lear kind of overperformed. And that was the same, um, the same battery pack and platform. And um, this this one's not. But again, that was on a different uh, course. So I would love for someone, again, who is a little bit more official than me, uh, if they want to borrow my car, run this on their range test and see what they get. That would be super cool. So now uh, we're gonna make our way back to the final stop. Maybe we'll do a little bit better than 266, 270 maybe, that'd be pretty sweet, but uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be okay with whatever the final result is. We have just gotten the charge vehicle soon warning from Chevrolet. <laughs> uh, I promise we will. It says we have 30 miles of range remaining. We shall see about that. If we get that and we add that to the current trip, that would give us 269.2 miles. So that would be cool. A little bit more than the last time, but we shall see what happens. Let's go ahead and um, we'll finish out this, this range test. And I might talk a little bit about some of the other things that happen here at the bottom of the pack when you start to run out of juice. So everyone, I got to 5% and I got booted off of adaptive cruise control and super cruise and I have to manually drive. So that is a behavior that occurs here at the bottom of the pack. Additionally, it no longer tells me my range. It just says low. So best of luck to me. Hopefully I make it back. All right, now we're at a little bit slower speed. Just trying to get the last bits of energy out of the battery. Um, my car scanner says I got about one and a half kilowatt hours left, which means I should have another four or five miles to go. So I'm just gonna kind of go down here and do a big little, a big little, a big old loop is what I meant to say. And then uh, head back to the charger and hopefully I get there right at zero percent state of charge. All right, everybody, we made it here at 268.5 miles. So it's four miles more than the last time. Uh, it still says 1%. It, I was going forever to try to get to zero, but I just came here. So it's about what we got. Maybe there's, I don't know, a mile or two left in there. Let's go look at all these numbers really quick. Energy usage. We pulled uh, 89.4 kilowatt hours from the battery. So that's interesting since it's an 85 kilowatt hour pack. I have tested before and the regen will take away from this number. Um, so that is that is apparently the capacity, which is really interesting, which would also alter the uh, efficiency numbers, but whatever. And then let me go back here to trip. And there we are. So 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. All right, everybody. So that was pretty interesting. Um, I was going to put out another video, but instead I'm just going to kind of like summarize the other range tests I did because I basically got the same result. Um, you know, there was some elevation, but I didn't think it would be that big of an issue, at least with this one, and it would be a little bit better of a performance and it wasn't. So I'm just gonna stick with it. You know, this is the range to, uh, you know, 268 or whatever, I already forgot. I think it was 268. Um, I think that's reasonable. It's really not that bad of a, of a result. I was hoping for 290 or 300. Um, I do believe if it was a like completely flat terrain or slightly downhill that you could get the 290 to 300 mile range. Like if I started in Maryland and drove down to North Carolina, I bet I would get get that. Uh, but th this is what it is. Um, like I said earlier in the video, if anybody wants to grab it to take it to test it, that would be great. There are some people um, who do range tests where their um, change in elevation is very minimal. And I think that this car would do better, but this is the average EV loop. Um, so 
I would not say that uh, 268 is the, the like the final range. Obviously, with EVs, uh, there are a lot of factors that can change um, change the range. You know, speed, temperature, elevation, air density. There's a ton of things that could change it. So this is just this is my loop, and I'm going to own it. And uh, 2 268, so slightly better than the ID4. Um, I actually recall when I ran the Equinox the last time that the uh, there was like three miles or so left. Uh, so I probably got that. So yeah, there it is. So uh, thanks again for watching. Um, I know this is kind of probably not what a lot of people are looking for, but I still don't think it's that bad. And you know, if you drive uh, 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour, I bet that would also make a huge difference and get to that 300, 300 mile range that people are looking for. Uh, you know, the EPA estimated ranges that they advertise are, you know, not standardized, unfortunately. So I don't know what they were, were doing to, uh, to, to get those numbers. I'm sure that the city uh, driving was pretty good. I've gotten some like city driving of like four miles per kilowatt hour, 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour in this thing. And then here I get 2.9. So maybe that averages out to 300. I haven't done the math, but maybe it does. So, all right, everybody, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. As always, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will catch you all next time.